Alrighty, hey everybody, welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me we have an encore presentation of Michael King. Uh, Michael King is the founder and CEO of Teams.Coach. Uh, he's a highly sought-after executive and business leadership coach. He helps business leaders clarify and execute at high levels through the proprietary Teams, T-E-A-M-S, methodology to develop measurable business growth and company-wide collaboration. This is Michael's uh, second appearance on The, the Remarkable Coach. Um, it was His first episode was fantastic. If you have not heard that yet or watched it on YouTube, I highly, highly recommend you go back and listen to that because um, that's going to kind of set a good foundation for you about what Michael does um, and how he does it and, and who he works with. And this is going to be just kind of a, a catch-up call. So, uh, Michael, welcome back to The Remarkable Coach. Thanks, man. It's always great hanging with you. The, yeah. the great Michael Pacheco. <laughs> you hear that? It's the great Michael Pacheco, everybody. <laughs> that's such a powerful name. It's like I got, I got stuck with Michael King. But then you get Michael Pacheco, and you even get to spell your first name differently than me. So, man. The, the vowel at the end is is kind of gives it a little flair. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but King King is certainly a powerful name. Um, at any rate, for those of our listeners and viewers, Michael, who have not had a chance to listen to the first episode, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words and and why you do what you do and what it exactly it is you do? Yeah, I um, I have the you know, I, I stepped into this role of being a coach, not because I necessarily um, was chasing it down or anything like that. Um, I, in fact, I actually, I actually believe that the best coaches would agree that uh, coaching kind of chooses you, you don't necessarily choose it. So um, I come from like, so my background comes from, um, I was in the church world, uh, being an executive pastor for close to two decades of my life. And, uh, and just through that, like there's something that happens when you become a resource player with, with, when, in whatever lane that you're in. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're in the automotive industry. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in dental, chiropractic, whatever. But if you end up becoming a resource player in the space that you're in, uh, there's a platform that will be presented to you if you're all about serving other people. And um, and that was that was my story, right? So I was my church helped. Uh, I we we helped grow it from, you know, 500 to, to multiple thousands on multiple campuses over about a decade speaking on platforms. And the next thing you know, I was back in school, finishing up my master's and starting a doctoral program for, um, for executive coaching. And I launched my business, um, back in 2016 and I coach the world's best leaders who lead the world's best teams, plain and simple. And, uh, I would have never thought that I would be able to get to do what I do today, and it's a it's kind of an awesome thing. But uh, we're making the world spin a little bit better uh, day by day. I love it, man. I love the uh, I love the commitment and the um, what's the word the the, the grip that you have uh, when you say I, I coach the world's best leaders with the world's best teams. That's great. Um, you you mentioned the the phrase resource player a couple times there. Tell us about about that. What exactly is a resource player? I don't think I've I don't think I've heard you use that that phrase before. Um, you know, I th we you and I I don't know if we've talked about like scarcity versus abundance mindset. You mm -hmm. know, but mm -hmm. I know that there's some things that 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 leaders struggle with when they're in. Um, when they're in their entrepreneurial mode or when they're in their business practices and you have to make decisions based on what you have or what you don't have. And sometimes it's really easy for you to flip into scarcity mindset, you know? Um, but leaders who operate in abundance mindset and abundance practices, you end up being a resource player, whether, you, you know, whether that was something that you intended for or not, but it really simply comes down to this is that you have a keen awareness that you're not just creating, creating things for yourself, but mm -hmm. you're making an impact and a contribution into the community that you serve. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we give a lot of things away. I've always given a lot of things away. Um, and so when I find out that things are working, um, man, I'm going to pull somebody into my circle that, or if I bump into somebody that's doing kind of what I'm doing, they're struggling with same, some of the same things I struggled with. Mm -hmm. Um, they don't have solutions. You're going to give them, we give them away. And so, um, that was kind of what it was like during that phase of when I was in it, being an executive pastor mm -hmm. um, was that we had um, 
I had actually been positioned in a place to where I had some credibility and authority and a certain level of expertise on a very specific thing. It just turned out that there's a lot of people that needed help in that space. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So we last spoke in, I think it was August, 2022 on this podcast. Um, what is, what's, what's new since then? It's been no, not quite a year, but it's been, it's been a minute. Yeah. Well, we've, um, I think August of 2022. That was when our podcast was published. We may have, we may have actually recorded the podcast a few months prior to that. Um, well, yeah. So, um, we launched the Level Up Leader podcast. That's right. So that was something that, uh, had happened, uh, as a result of that. And, um, and that's going well, you know, that's, um, you know, it took, a, it took a little bit for me to try to find my voice, I would say, uh, how am I going to fit into this, this executive coaching space as a podcast host, but, um, loving what we do. In fact, we just dropped an episode today that I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about as well. Um, our business is con is continually getting more locked into um, the model of what what we're supposed to do in the first place, and that well, I'm a little bit different as an executive coach. Some of our branding actually is changing too, by the way. So you'll be seeing nice. that become a little bit more Michael King centric. Um, uh -huh. So I have three books that are that are in writing process right now, nice. and so um, so we know that for sure within the next six months, on the first one will be dropping, um, but going back to uh, just our business model of, you know, I, um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with, ex with executives, um, mostly large businesses, fortune 500 space a lot. Um, and then I do tier two is our executive team to where it's, it's, it's if I get to work with somebody one-on-one uh, -on -one within the ex executive coaching space, we have an option to expand that out to executive team engagement. And then that level three is full enterprise engagement. And, um, and we're pumped. Like we have, we're building more and more trust with fast-paced, uh, big impact organizations in which they are, they're inviting us into the opportunity to work with their full team at full scope engagement. And um, and it's it's pretty awesome, man. I mean, like it's it's absolute. It's a disruptor in the in that space, mm -hmm. and we're really having a lot of fun with it. I love it, man. I love it. Tell me about uh, what you guys are doing to build trust with these, with, with big game prospects and cl big game clients. Um, well, the first thing is over delivering, mm -hmm. always over delivering and understanding that in, in executive coaching space for us, um, you know, I think, I think sometimes people struggle. Well, first of all, you know this, right? I think we might've talked about this a little bit, but somewhere during COVID, everybody became a coach. Yep. Like, like it was everybody. it was June of 2020 when everybody got the pink slip, got laid off, and they just and they were stuck at home, and they decided they're going to be a coach. I remember it vividly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I like so like I said, I, coaching chose me. I didn't chase yeah. it, so I didn't like you know I didn't get fired from a job or anything like that. This was actually you know a strategic thing that I felt like the Lord had opened up in my life. But um, but but yeah, within that though, so it's like okay, we're coming into um 2023. Um, and now it's like inboxes on, on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram or, uh, and, and LinkedIn are completely getting jacked up and full of people that are doing their sales pitches via LinkedIn now. And so it's like, okay, what are you going to do to consistently stand out? So one of the streams that became an incredibly high uh, value for us was referral business and making sure that we had the right system set up. Yeah. Right. And so, um, and so for us of understanding that every single relation, so when I told you those, those three tiers, mm -hmm. you always begin it with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. Every single relationship has the opportunity to expand into, you know, so the, the upsell availability of actually working within an organization of like, okay, we might be talking today that I'm just working with you, but we're going to over deliver. You're going to be happy. And then we're going to help you transform your executive team. And then we're going to help you transform your full organization. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, so the over deliver part is incredibly big. The second thing is making sure that we have an incredibly clear communication strategy, mm -hmm. um, like our internal communication strategy with our clients. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll tell you this is that, you know, we, I think sometimes that we think that no news is good news mm -hmm. and it's really easy for us to get busy and to get slammed with the, the things that, um, that are priorities in our lives. 
And it's really easy for us to go, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and just not check in with that client this week, even though I'm not meeting with them, or I don't need to update certain things within their, their portfolio. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I'm, but I'm telling you, like, you know, making, uh, you know, a weekly dashboard, a communications dashboard, regardless of whether you're actually seeing that person for that week, uh, creating um, opportunities. Like, so we have our, our team's that coach app in which, um, we can we can easily communicate back and forth uh, anytime that we need to, and we make we make accessibility a priority. That has been a game changer when it comes to building high levels of trust. That's awesome. That's awesome. What kind of um, what kind of metrics? What kind of metrics are you putting on your your dashboards for your clients? Is that is that client dependent? I presume it depends on what their goal is and what their out ideal outcome is. What you're working on them with, or is there's you know is there some standardization across clients of things that you like to track and pay attention to? Yeah. So the things that are standard between all clients is really the team's methodology. You know. So um, so when it comes to the targets. Um, you know, that stands for the T engagement. So the three levels of engagement, like how am I engaging with myself as a person? How am I engaging with my team and how am I engaging with my crowd? And then action steps. What are the things that we said yes to, um, that we're going to do? What were the outcomes? Uh, momentum and synergy are the other two things. So what are the things that are slowing us down and do I have the permission to remove them? Mm-hmm. That's sort of big. But then our app ties into other things as well. Like it, it ties into your Apple, uh, your Apple health metrics on your phone to where we, we get a report back of your sleep time. Um, we get a report back of, uh, yeah, absolutely. Like your exercise maintenance, all those, all those things that go into your actually lifestyle of being a healthy leader. Um, we put those things on the dashboard and then your business practices, of course, we have to include top line revenue. Um, we have to include stuff like that. We have to include like your turnover percentages and your ratio of sustainability. Um, and all those things really bring in together a, a pretty good holistic picture. So we keep those updated. Yeah, that's I mean, holistic is the word that the first word that popped into my mind. I've, I, I have not. I mean, I've spoken to hundreds of coaches to date, and I don't think I know of any other coach that does a weekly. A weekly dashboard with. Holistic metrics that are so holistic that you're talking to like uh, the Apple health app. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we didn't, you know, it was, it was one of those things to where I wish it, it wasn't, I wish I could take credit saying that that was like our thing, but it was something to where, um, to where we were tracking it. We were asking people to kind of report it in. And, uh, one of my team members came and said, you know, we don't have to ask for that. If they're on the app, we, through the API, we can probably get access to a lot of that information. And I was like, all right, let's give it a shot and do it. So, and it works. Cool. That's great, man. That's, that's awesome. Um, what what else is there anything else that's uh, that's new since August that you'd like since to chat August, about? I don't think there's anything specifically new. Um, you know, we're I you know going into quarter number four of last year. Um, well, I guess new doesn't always have to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, new can be unfortunate, but um, quarter number four of last year was the hardest uh, quarter that we've ever had mm-hmm. as a business. Mm-hmm. Um, ended up having to downsize our team significantly. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, our fault was in the area of our business plan originally. Um, and so we had to make some adjustments and some changes in order for us to be able to, uh, to make a, to, to get out of the hole that we were in. But basically the perfect storm was, um, towards the end of Q3 going into qu- quarter number four was we had clients, I think we had four or five, it might've been even more than that, that literally gave us maybe a day or two notice that they weren't going to renew or they were getting out of their contract because worst. they were facing worst case scenario. Uh-huh. You know, the economy, COVID, all those things. And it's, um, and when you're working with larger organizations and we're not a big team, you know, that's the thing. So when you're looking at 50% of your income stream literally disappearing overnight um you have to you have to be nimble and you have to adjust really fast so um and also too i wouldn't have it really any other way because i love what we do but it's not like the it's not like the on-ramp with new clients is a fast one Mm -hmm. when you're working with bigger organizations sometimes they move incredibly slow when it comes to decision making so yeah uh, 
so it took us it took us a good three three months for us to be able to go okay i think we got this now okay yeah. the plan's looking good um and then we can go from there yeah i know i get that too because I, I i've done some consulting with some some big companies johnson and johnson and intel to name a couple of them and that's like it definitely takes a long time, number one, for them to come to that decision that they want to work with you. And then number two, to get you involved deep enough, right, deep enough in the process that you start to understand really the the scope of what you're of what you're looking at to to a level at which you are able to then affect change. Yeah, 100 percent. And um you know, the value, the value proposition of, I wouldn't even see the value proposition, but when we go, when we talked about it a little bit earlier about that scarcity versus abundance mentality, it's, um, it will show itself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's where even I had to get into check because I started to get a little freaked out mm -hmm. and my spider senses started, <laughs> started going off like maybe <laughs> even a year ago of going, you got to fix this man. Because if, if, you're, if the perfect storm happens, you're going to be in trouble. And, uh, you know, and so we started to tr to try to adjust. I just, the thing is that we made some key strategic moves, but um, but it, it just the results finally pay started paying off a little bit later than I would have liked. Yeah, yeah. But you turn the ship around, right? That's a, that's that's the important part. It takes a little bit of time. There's nothing wrong with that. It took a little bit of time to find your voice in the podcast. That's totally normal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm I'm more than satisfied with where we're at right now, and yeah. um. And we, you know, I, you know, in the middle of that, so we, you know, we have some books coming out. Um, yeah. Our my my keynote speaking schedule um, is is busy and it's good and I love it. Um, and and more importantly, is that we're truly making an impact with the clients that we serve. Um, I I would it would drive me absolutely crazy to have a roster of clients that were just average. Huh. <laughs> it would drive me nuts. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so so the fact you know that I have you know, the majority of my clients, you know, I think our average top line revenue increase, our average top line revenue, revenue increase across all of our client pool right now is 1.8% or I'm sorry, 180% top line revenue. Nice. Um, and some in these companies aren't small, like they're huge. Yeah. So, um, so that's amazing. I have, a, I have one, get one group, um, cause we, when we talk about like setting up goals and things like that, we don't really necessarily set up like just a, a 50% increase or a 2x increase. We we're always talking exponentially, like 10x over sure. the next five years. What does that look like? Let's make sure we reverse engineer that. Sure. And um, and we have one of our smaller businesses um, that they've been with us for two years and they've had over a 540% increase in top line revenue. That's awesome. And they're, it's, in, it's absolutely incredible. And um, to see how they're developing all the right things and the right culture, it's insanely good. So good. That's awesome. Can I, I want to, I'm going to ask, I want to follow that up with a question that you are absolutely welcome to tell me that you don't want to answer it. What is your, um, how do you bill your clients? What is your, what is your, your, your invoicing system look like? Are you taking a percentage of, of, of profit increases? Do you just charge a flat fee? What does that look like? Yeah, we just, we charge a flat fee. Okay. Um, Trust me, there's been multiple times that we've been looking at the, you know, looking at the, the reports of our clients coming in and going, if we just did a percentage share. <laughs> that's, I mean, uh, that's what I'm thinking. So also, you know, if, if you're getting, if you're getting these and you can tell me to shove my advice where the sun don't shine, but if you're getting these kind of results with all of your clients, it might be a really great offer and you could get more clients if you, if you had no upfront fee and you only charged for percentage of profit increase on the back end, because then they have nothing to lose by starting to work by working with you. That, I mean, that might be, a, that might be a possibility. Um, you know, I think um, as if, if top line revenue increase was the thing was the main pain point that we were trying to fix. Um, then I think that that would, that might be a very, very good option. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things, cause I mean, kind of just like we can still drill down on that too. Most companies come because of the, because of a, a really big problem, mm -hmm. you know, people will embrace change when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Sure. And so, um, 
So if somebody does come to me with top line revenue issues, I'm going to solve that. We're going to work with their sales verticals and making sure that we we get if we find out what the problem is and we'll fix it. Maybe you know look at structure, all those things, systems, making sure that those things are lined up. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I'm only fixing top line revenue problems so I can go with the bigger fix of fixing your culture. Right. And a lot of times organizations, they don't know necessarily that their culture is messed up until they actually start to do a little bit more of a deep dive uh, mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like a, a periphery thing. Like they're, you know, they're the obvious problem that sits right in front of them is not the culture. The culture is almost like the second or the third order effect of whatever their, they think their primary problem is. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's hard. It's hard to see it. It's kind of like that old adage that it's really hard for you to be able to see the label of the jar that you're in. Yeah. And, and so working with a, working with a leader that, um, that is at least willing to accept that somebody's looking in from the outside and going, okay, there's a bigger, you want to fix your top line revenue problems. I can, we can fix them forever, but we have to fix culture. Mm -hmm. That is really, if you fix culture, you can fix almost everything. Mm-hmm. I love it. Awesome, Michael. Um, well, cool, man. I mean, that's, I think I just wanted to catch up a little bit. That's about all I got. Is there if there, anything else that you wanted to, to chat about that we haven't had a chance to, to touch upon yet? Uh, no, man. I think I, I love catching up with you, man. So thanks for letting me be on. And um, if anybody would like to connect with me or, um, or check out the things that we're doing to really help companies discover their best mm -hmm. uh, opportunities, uh, just, have, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, we are offering, you know, free uh, one hour executive coaching sessions uh, as kind of just a, a handshake start off for people that want to discover what it's like to, um, to go to the next level. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, you can find Michael King at the, his website, teams.coach. There's no .com at the end of that. And uh, the podcast is the Level Up Leader with Michael King. Right. Level Up Leader. And that is on everywhere you can get your podcasts. You can find it on YouTube. So definitely uh, check that out as well. And uh, yeah, Michael, it's been great catching up, man. I appreciate you taking the time to, to come on and chat with me again. Yeah, you bet. Thank you, Michael. Cheers, man. Take care. And thank you to all our viewers and listeners. We'll talk to you guys soon.